Hi everyone. My name is Ryuhei Sano, Associate Professor of Hose University, Japan, and Regional Council Member of Global Alliance for Public Relations and Communication Management. It is really my pleasure to make a presentation titled Winning Trust at the Olympics. Stakeholders' reputation learnings from the Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games. As you remember, the Olympic Games was hosted in Tokyo this year, although we call it Tokyo 2020 in 2021, because it's been one year since the Olympic Games was postponed according to COVID-19. Reviewing the fact of the Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games. So we welcomed more than 11,000 athletes from all over the world for Olympic Games, and also more than 4,000 athletes with disabilities for Tokyo Paralympic Games. Indeed, it was a big event. At the same time, there are a lot of learnings. They, there are three core concepts for these two games, achieving personal best, unity in diversity, and also connecting to tomorrow. So in this presentation, I'd like to focus on, in particular, unity in diversity as lessons learned in public relations. So I'd like to address 10 topics in challenge and development. The first one, in fact, this was before the games. Have you ever seen this logo for Tokyo 2020? In fact, plagiarism about the logo, it happened. So the logo approved initially by the committee was the plagiarized one. So it was a big shock in a sense, and big news in Japan and also in the world. So eventually, the, the, initially, the logo was not accepted from the perspective of intellectual property rights. At the same time, in terms of public relations, it was indeed discouraging uh, among all Japanese how we could perceive this and consider how we can cheer up ourselves towards Olympic and Paralympic Games. Then another thing happened. It was the resignation of key personnel in the organizing committee and also the opening and closing ceremony. There are several important persons. However, these people uh, resigned for in the very important positions for Tokyo 2020. And indeed, in terms of the public relations, it was a big impact as well, because some of them were resigned uh, according to several walls such as like, to insult the appearance of female celebrities or even harassment. So before the Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games, then there are several negative perception in terms of PR. Then, needless to say, we had COVID. So the games were held without spectators in principle. So it was a very tough decision to make but decided that no one would be there to see the performance of athletes. So the games were held while a state of emergency was declared in Tokyo and other cities. But at that time, the number of new infections the cases did not stop at all or even continue to increase. So very, very tough decision. However, eventually the games were held, but no one could say that there is in any indirect effects of COVID-19 or not. Then, once the games were held, but the, with no spectators in principle, meaning no ticket revenue as well. Therefore, the organizing committee was sure to end up in the red. Then question was raised. So the major issue is how to share the burden in terms of finance as well. So in terms of public relations, now there is a the debate as to how we could review the games comprehensively and 
keep the transparent discussion, in particular concerning a challenge to commercialism, because games were held and there are lots of PR activities as well. But eventually, the financial wise, the discussion was not always made, but event was organized. And this year, it was very important for all of us in Japan because of this photo too. Would you please recall what happened 10 years ago? In fact, for us in Japan, the re reconstruction was one keyword for Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games. Because initially, the, the motto of these games was Olympics for reconstruction. So we, in 2011, 10 years ago, we had the Great East Japan earthquake, the very big one. And this Olympic was supported with the motto to, towards the reconstruction of this uh, earthquake. So therefore, this motto was well supported. However, eventually, uh, after the COVID-19 in particular, so this motto was not always highlighted. Then there are several other issues concerning public relations. Could you please guess what kind of photos they are? In fact, in the games, 25% of foods are in loss or waste. Because uh, according to COVID-19, the number of volunteers decreased drastically after the decision was made to have no spectators. So not, not so many people are there anyway. Therefore, no volunteers as well. Then lunch boxes were disregarded in place where the general public could see. So, but another challenge was even if the event was canceled, however, the, the number of orders are huge. Therefore, the lunchbox might have been disregarded anyhow within the business such as the factory. So once the big order was made, then not always easy at all to can cancel as well. Then there was a topic of food waste. However, there are several positive moves as well. For example, the Olympic Games, with the Olympic Games, then it was to ensure accessibility before and after the Games. In Tokyo and also surrounding area, so lots of renovations were made and also accessible taxi is to be available. And barrier-free status of railway stations was also very much improved. For example, stairs, eliminated instead installing the elevators and accessible toilets as well. And the platform screen doors are nowadays uh, available more and more. And tactile paving is also for sure for considering blind persons. So there was the guideline called Tokyo 2020 Accessible Guidelines. And according to this, the venues were arranged in a positive way, regardless of the persons with different needs in this sense. So eventually the barrier-free status of public transportation in Greater Tokyo was improved. That's one positive move. Could you please guess who he is? Actually, he is uh, what they call the deaf uh, interpreter. So he was mobilized in Tokyo Games in the closing ceremony. So when, we, when it comes to the sign language interpreters, some may imagine that they are hearing persons and listen to someone and interpret by sign. But in the opening of Tokyo uh, Olympic Games, then initially the non sign language interpreter was provided. Then deaf community and also other persons raised a voice as to why not having uh, sign language interpreters to make sure that all information is to be accessible. Then the, there is a form of sign language mainly used by persons with hearing impairment, such as deaf person. Then in the closing ceremony of Tokyo Olympic Games, the deaf, deaf sign language interpreter was mobilized and then got lots of support because 
he could utilize more natural and expressive form of communication through sign language in the public broadcasting station in HK. So in this context, so many people got to know much more about the nuance or what's really going on because this deaf sign language interpreter can express clearly about such the minute the nuance of the feelings as well. And it was really focused in public relations. It's a really positive move as well. Then another thing that I'd like to highlight is the Japanese technology for persons with disabilities. So hosting the Paralympic Games in Japan, it's been a good opportunity for others to get to know disability publicly. And in this context, lots of technologies were introduced. So, so many companies, regardless of the size, big or small one, then they focus somewhat the technology which is applicable for those with diverse backgrounds, such as persons with disabilities. Then some corporations started to think more about what they call the needs of those with different perspectives, the, the, those with different needs, like persons with disabilities, and th this could be public relations as well. Nowadays, we have sustainable development goals or SDGs. So therefore, now so many companies or the initiatives, they focus on SDGs and disability could be one entry point. So the Tokyo Paralympic Games could enhance understanding about the different needs of persons with disabilities in this context. And the challenge and development number 10, I'd like to highlight We the 15. It's a big campaign of persons with disabilities. In fact, it is indeed a big, uh, biggest coalition ever of international organizations because with a 15 is a campaign launched at the Tokyo 2020 Paralympic Games with colleagues of 1.2 billion persons with disabilities. In fact, in all over the world, we have 15% of the populations are with disabilities. So once they get together in one place and accelerate the change between now and 2030, it could be a big power in public relations as well. So in this sense, then Tokyo Skytree, which is nowadays one symbol in Tokyo, was also to support this the campaign as well. And so many people in the world got to know more about disability through these public relations activities. That's one positive thing as well. So then let me come to uh, summarize this presentation two things I'd like to highlight. Stakeholders' reputation learnings. One is what they call the terms used in Olympic and Paralympic Games. Actually, there is an analysis on popular words in the articles related to Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games. And there are clear differences between the two games, the Olympic Games and the Paralympic Games. What's really the difference? Then in Paralympic Games, there were more articles or words used that featured the family members or included the words such as efforts or what you call the develop the capacity, the ability, such the human aspects more. But Olympic Games more as a result of performance. So in a sense, it's good uh, to enhance understanding about persons with disabilities. However, there's still a challenge as to what's really the difference between Olympic and Paralympic Games. Should we have a difference or it should be somewhat the equally well uh, arranged, organized or not? That's one uh, learning this time. Another learning is this. So in relation to Tokyo 2020 Games, so we got to know the, what they call the importance of interaction between two types of knowledge called tacit and explicit knowledge. If we wish to create more impacts in public relations, 
then we need this interaction between two knowledge. What does it mean? Because explicit means it's clear or visible or written. So that's why it's easier to understand in a sense. However, in COVID-19 situation, there are a lot of unexpected things happened in conjunction with Tokyo 2020 Paralympic, uh, Olympic and Paralympic Games. So in this context, we had to mobilize tacit knowledge in public relations as well. Tacit means unclear or informal or not always clearly visible. So in this sense, the learning by doing many things uh, in public relations as well. So it was indeed a challenge. However, because there are lots of new learnings in response to COVID-19 in particular, therefore, lots of new ideas coming up as well. Then one conclusion that I'd like to say in promoting public relations is how we can set up such opportunity of the dialogue between tacit and explicit knowledge so that then we can promote more new knowledge and new idea coming up for strong public relations. And Tokyo Olympics was one opportunity for us in this sense. So, arigato, thank you very much for your attention. So, I hope this presentation could be somewhat interesting for you. Once again, thank you very much.